In this video we are going to talk about best of 5 worst video games of 2022. So before starting this video like this video. And subscribe to our YouTube channel for future updates. We are midway as the year progressed and things appear to be getting somewhat worse for video gamers. Most titles delivered for the current year appear to have potentially yet turned out to be the greatest failures. Regardless of certain games having invigorating and promising trailers, the ongoing interaction, designs, and over-advertised miniature progress structure have prompted a frustrating turn. So absent a lot further ado, here are the 5 horrible computer games you likely ought to avoid. Number 5 A Babylon's Fall Created by Platinum Games and distributed by Square Enix, Babylon's Fall is a pretending hack-and-cut activity-filled game delivered in 2022. Utilizing a third individual point of view, players assume the job of a sentinel to scale a huge pinnacle. The game's point is to arrive at the highest point of the pinnacle while finishing a progression of journeys. You can play the game in a solitary mode or through a helpful multiplayer of four players. Albeit the game elements a vivid battle framework. It contains different pointless highlights that make it amazingly average. First off, the game's storyline isn't convincing, also the absence of visual allure of its characters and horrendous surfaces. The game neglects to accurately catch the painted material craftsmanship configuration, causing it to seem tasteless and tedious. Besides, the unfortunate lighting and the shockingly evolved NPCs add to the game's in general awful construction. Babylon's Fall is an activity-pretending hack-and-cut computer game played from a third individual point of view. The player takes command of a sentinel, who should scale a gigantic pinnacle known as the Ziggurat. Players began at a center point region known as Sentinel Force HQ where they can cooperate with different players. Visit shops or metal forgers to buy stuff and redesigns and access journeys. Each mission can be played performance, however the game likewise upholds four-player helpful multiplayer. Players rise three to four stories in each mission until they arrive at the highest point of the pinnacle. En route, players will open plunder which can be utilized to upgrade the strength of the characters. Every sentinel is furnished with two weapons. Be that as it may, the player is likewise outfitted with a gadget known as Gideon's Coffin. The casket permits players to convey two additional ghastly weapons. These weapons can at this point not be utilized once the ghostly energy bar is exhausted. However it will bit by bit top off after some time. The game elements five unique weapons types, including sword, hammer, bow, bar, and safeguard. Number 4 A Postal 4, No Regrets Incidentally, Postal 4, No Regrets is loaded with laments. The game is a continuation of the Postal 2 series after Postal 3 got a heap of negative surveys from players and pundits. Created and distributed by Running With Scissors, the first individual shooter game is intended to be comedic. The game takes on exceptional interactivity as it permits players to set individuals ablaze. Pee on them, bring down a pile of crap with a hose and, surprisingly, flip off NPCs in the wake of utilizing a rocket launcher on them. Postal 4's interactivity is a development to Postal 2, where the postal guy moves to another town and his vehicle gets taken. The dude needs to play out a progression of occasions with a definitive objective of getting his vehicle back. The undertakings are modest, going from changing a light to sending off Americans across the Mexican line. We trust that Postal 4, No Regrets is a sarcastic study of private enterprise. Nonetheless, the jokes are ineffectively composed and obsolete. Besides, the game encounters continuous accidents and errors. Indeed, even with a strong PC, you can in any case encounter different specialized issues. Postal 4 gets a significant number of its ongoing interaction highlights from its ancestor, Postal 2. The game is revolved around various tasks that the postal dude should finish every day, which incorporate being a jail monitor, a sewer specialist, and a creature catcher on Monday. Different undertakings for a pack from south of the borderland on Tuesday, for example. Line pirating and turf labeling, working for the city chairman of Edenson on Wednesday. Including a replacement to the request task from Postal 2. Working for the neighborhood mafia on Thursday with errands including testing models for computer games and gear a political decision. 
and working for the confounding head honcho controlling Edenson on Friday. Including striking an old sanctuary, managing a hired fighter state army at the nearby shopping center. And stopping a dam before an Armageddon clique can utilize it to supply defile the town's water. Number 3, Skatebird. A cutting-edge age skating matchup created by American Studio Glass Bottom Games. Skatebird is essentially a bird on a skateboard. The game gets its idea from Tony Hawk's Pro Skater. The primary contrast is that the player controls a bird, not a human person. Skatebird's story rotates around a bird whose proprietor abandons skating, and the bird takes up skating to encourage them. Skatebird's ongoing interaction includes skating around the various conditions and chancing upon NPCs or, for this situation, NPBs for challenges. The game doesn't show which individual bird can relegate a mission to you. This can be monotonous since you'll need to skate for some time to track down the following test. The difficulties are really direct, nonetheless, the game's camera control might make it a smidgen challenging to finish. Moreover, the bird might stall out, and it very well may be difficult to receive and return. This causes the game to seem drowsy, and you might be enticed to restart the game to slip out of the difficult situation. While the game's technicians are not weighty on skating, Skatebird has a great idea, but wretched. Beside the above-mentioned, Skatebird is a charming arcade game with a loosening-up soundtrack. In any case, because of its crude nature and fairly unfortunate mechanics, it tends to be basically disturbing to play for any normal gamer. Number 2, Chocobo GP. Chocobo GP is a cutting-edge age Final Fantasy spin-off and a continuation of the 1999 PlayStation game Chocobo Racing. Created by Erika and distributed by Square Enix, Chocobo GP is an exemplary card race with both single-player and multiplayer modes. The game's goal is for players to race through the tracks in front of their rivals. Players can utilize different strategies, for example, power slide floats for speed lifts and smooth turns. Albeit the game stands apart as an exemplary kart dashing series. The few microtransactions and dullness make light of its ongoing interaction. The game isn't equivalent to the Mario Kart series, particularly with the last option's shocking adaptation. The game purposes three monetary standards, which can be a lose for most players. You'd anticipate that the game should be a simple get-and-play race kart game. Nonetheless, that is not the situation. The game purposes three monetary standards that open different levels and characters. While certain monetary standards can be procured by playing the game. The Mithril Cash is a top-notch money, which you can purchase from the Switch eShop. Besides, the game's price pass is dreary and deadened. Number 1, The Waylanders. Hitting our main spot on the rundown is The Waylanders, a pretending game created by Spanish group Gato Studio. The game purposes a third individual shooter point of view. However players can likewise change to a hierarchical point of view thanks to the isometric camera view. The Waylanders highlights 12 unique continuous battle modes and incorporates a strategic delay that the player can use to refocus. In the game, players can assume the job of a pioneer, watchman, hero, healer, or alchemist. The game additionally permits players to pick their race or beginning. While playing the game, players can gain some useful knowledge about pre-noteworthy Christianity and Celtic old stories. Other than that, the game needs character and numerous specialized hitches. First off, you might see some cutscenes and interpretations are absent. Likewise, you'll probably encounter an endless rundown of bugs and blunders halfway through. Quite, the Waylanders highlight an astonishing story and idea. Yet perhaps the designers need to carve out opportunity to refine it. The game's unconventional controls and dull battle can be changed to convey a superior gaming experience. Up to that point, the Waylanders stay a pearl that needs seriously cleaning. What do you think about this video? Do let us know in the comments section below. If you enjoyed this video and want to hear from us again, be sure to hit that subscribe button before you go.